The Cube presents Dell Technologies World, brought to you by Dell. Welcome back to Dell Tech World 2022. You're watching theCUBE. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with my co-host, John Furrier. Live event, I would say seven to 8,000 people really exceeded our expectations. And we're here with Chuck Witten, who's the co-chief operating officer and chief dot connector, I sometimes call him, at Dell Technologies. Chuck, welcome to theCUBE. I am thrilled to be here. How great is it to be you know, back in Las Vegas, uh, seven, 8,000 people here talking yeah. innovation. It's, uh, it's great. Yeah, it's like Jeff said this morning, I'm oh, really thrilled to be in Vegas maybe, but I'm happy to be back live. So yeah. Uh, friends and customers, yes. yeah, great so, to be here. Awesome, okay, the operative phrase is multi-cloud by default. That's kind of the buzz from your keynote. What do you mean by that? Well, look, customers have woken up uh, with multiple clouds, you know, multiple public clouds, on-premise clouds, increasingly as the edge becomes much more a reality for customers, clouds at the edge. And so that's what we mean by multi-cloud by default. It's not uh, yet been designed strategically. I think our argument yesterday was it can be and it should be. It is a very logical place for architecture to land because ultimately customers want the innovation across all of the hyperscale public clouds. They will see workloads and use cases where they want to maintain an on-premise cloud. On-premise clouds are not going away. I mentioned edge clouds, so it should be strategic. It's just not today. It doesn't work particularly well today. So when we say multi-cloud by default, we mean that's the state of the world today. Our goal is to bring multi-cloud by design, as you heard. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you 100%. We all know multi-cloud exists. It's by default, it's not going away. It's only going to get more complicated. What are you guys seeing in terms of the customer need to, as this becomes more of the strategy plus operations, I want to operationalize multi-cloud as an abstraction layer. How do you guys see the customer requirements? What problems are they trying to solve? Well, look, the Multi-cloud by default today are isolated clouds. They don't work together, your data is siloed, it's locked up, and it is expensive to move and make sense of it. So, you know, I think the word you and I were batting around before this is an interconnected tissue. That's what the world needs. They need the clouds to work together as a single platform. That's the problem that we're trying to solve, and you saw it in some of our announcements here that we started starting to make steps on that journey to make multi-cloud work together much simpler. It's interesting, you mentioned the hyperscalers and all that CapEx investments. Why wouldn't you want to take advantage of a cloud and build on the CapEx and then ultimately have the solutions? Machine learning is one area you see some specialization with the clouds, but you start to see the rise of super clouds, Dave calls them, and that's where you can innovate on a cloud, then go to the mul multiple clouds. Snowflake's one, uh, we see a lot of examples of super clouds. Project Alpine was another one. I mean, it's early, but it's, it's clearly where you're going. The technology is just starting to come around. I mean, it's, it's real. Yeah, well, I mean, why wouldn't you want to take advantage of all of the cloud innovation out there? Well, the answer would be, I don't want to do that if I'm going to feel locked up, if it's going to be too expensive. So again, I think Project Alpine's a perfect example of a step on that journey. If you can create a common storage pool, a fabric, if you will, that allows you to choose how, where you're going to process your data and store it, and more importantly, give your teams the same M&O tools, the same skill sets, the ability to operate on-premise or in the public clouds. You know, I think ultimately the theme of the last couple days in multi-cloud for us has been customer choice. We want to give them the choice to operate how they want to so they can take advantage of all those cloud services. Real quick, where does that innovation go from that uh, Alpine project? Because that's software defined, and I believe that's all your IP, all Dell Technologies IP. It is, So that yeah. factors in, so is that going to make the hard we're more innovative, is it going to be more application specific? Where do you see that going? Well look, our, uh, you know, putting our file block and object storage into the public clouds just gives them choice on uh, taking advantage of enterprise class storage software. You know, you saw in our announcements today, we're not stopping the innovation in our core arrays and, and, and hardware, and in fact, the theme today was software innovation. I think we announced 500 different software updates across PowerFlex, PowerMax, and PowerStore. So, look, we're going to continue to innovate across the storage portfolio. <laughs> now we're giving customers the choice, hey, you want it in the public cloud, that's what Project Alpine will let you do. Michael had a smile, and I won't say spring in his step because he's sitting in that chair, but he's smiling about the market share numbers on that, so pretty impressive, you guys got a good commanding lean there. 
Um, the super cloud thing, back to that, that concept, Snowflake, as we consider a super, super cloud, they took their IP, put it on a hyperscaler, differentiated themselves, have great value and scale, and they're running away with it, it looks like, at this point. I mean, you got Databricks, you got Redshift in there and other stuff, but as, as, a, as a concept, it's working, and now they're on multiple clouds. How do you see that super cloud connecting with Snowflake? Because you guys are building a little Snowflake connection. It's one of the big announcements here is Snowflake and Dell. Yeah. So can you talk about that? It was probably the one that got the most excitement from customers in the, la in the last day, and so look, you said it well, Snowflake, uh, you know, one of the most exciting companies in the data space right now with, and a vision from that company to say, hey, let's make the consumption of data as simple as cloud operating models have made the consumption of infrastructure. Well, we share that vision and love that vision, but we're each coming at it from different parts of the stack, right? So we're coming at it from storage up to data, they're coming data management down to data. It's a perfect match of our capabilities so that the announcements we made in our partnership, we're going to start with two use cases that our customers been, have been asking for. You know, the first is the ability to bi-directionally copy data from our storage to Snowflake's data cloud. That's exciting, but the more exciting one that created the buzz is if you don't want to move your data to the public cloud, Snowflake only operates in the public cloud today, we're now giving the opportunity to access their data services on premise and that's the, the excitement from customers that have said, hey look, I want to take advantage of Snowflake's capabilities, but for regulatory or security reasons, I'm not doing that today. This is a groundbreaker. Well, it's the interesting yeah. thing is because, you know, as many people know, Snowflake requires you to put their data in their cloud and in Snowflake format. This is the first example of non-native data being accessed into the Snowflake cloud. Exactly right, exactly right. So, you know, again, for, for cu customers that say, um, I just can't do it, I, I'm not, I cannot move my, my, my data, now they, have the, now they have an option. It's the first time Snowflake has collaborated with an on-premise infrastructure player. How'd that deal come about? Well, it started as all great deals in our business to Michael to the, <laughs> to the top. So it was a, uh, you know, and then it's been our teams working together closely, always, uh, you know, alongside our customers because that customer feedback of I want to take advantage of Snowflake's capabilities, you know, it's been, uh, we've been incubating it for a few months now and it was, it was great to bring it out on stage yesterday. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. You, you connect the dots, so to speak. We look at what Michael was saying, these compute hubs, towers for 5G to yep. small edges and big edges and data centers all coming together, uh, really key value pressure how data is going to be moving around. It's not just storage, it's data as code. It's a big part of the Incredible, transformation. Incredible, yeah. I mean look, this is, that was the, the start of the theme yesterday. Look, the great unsolved problems in infrastructure right now is data is everywhere, it's sprawling, it is less secure than we would like, help, and help me make sense of multi-cloud. I'd love to get your reaction real quick while I got you up here, because data science is a well-known practice. Yeah. There's been the rise of a hot persona that seems to be you know, growing in numbers, but it's, it's, a, it's a, a scarce skill that's data engineering. Because um, the data is not just doing visualizations, there's a lot of architectural work being done to yeah. solve that strategy problem. What's your reaction to this new data engineering at the scale that we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a space I, I am just learning about, to be honest with you, data engineering, but look, part of, part of uh, what we observe is it takes a lot of calories from organizations to get data in a place where you can make sense of it and make decisions, and whether that's data scientists spending too much time cleaning or the advent, as you said, of data engineering to create the architectures to help make that decision. Look, there's a lot of work that goes into that. Yeah. It would be great over time to automate that. I think that's also the next great step on the journey. You know, Chuck, when I did the intro, I really didn't set it up that well because you know, people, oh, hey, here's the new guy, but you have a lot of experience. <laughs> With Dell, you've been a consultant to the company for sure. a long, long time. Tell us a little bit about that. I'm interested in what you see as your greatest strengths that you bring to Dell. Yeah, well as you said, look, I, uh, I, I am the new guy-ish. I think it's been eight, eight months. I, I don't know how long I can continue to use that as the excuse, <laughs> but I had worked with Dell for over a decade as a consultant previously at Bain & Company. So you know, look, my background is as a strategist and I did lots of work in sort of M&A and private equity and so that's my background. I'm your sort of classic MBA who spent a decade in technology and a decade alongside Jeff Clark and Michael in the transformation of the company. So I hope I bring the right sort of outsiders but insiders perspective um, to you know to, to the to the to the party if you will but um, you know I've I've learned I've certainly learned a lot in the last eight months as you get alongside and inside the the machine at Dell. Um, 
So irrespective of the financial magic. I think I know what question he's going to ask. Irrespective of the financial magic that Dell did with the VMware spin, as a consultant, one could have gone through a mental exercise of saying, hey, what about you know, spinning it in? Because you got this great software asset. Everybody wants software and marginal economics. Yeah. Okay, the decision was made, and now we're on to the future. It obviously has an impact on margins and gross margins and, and yeah. everything else. So, I guess, as a consultant, you turn that into opportunity. Yeah. Right? So where is that opportunity? How do you feel about, how do you think about that really hardware, heavy hardware exposure and where you want to go in the future? Well look, I think we've, that's what we've been talking about the last couple of days. So, you know, the VMware spinoff was a moment in which the world looked at us and I think asked the question you did, you know, what are you, right? Are you a legacy hardware company or where you're going? But the reality of the world is, it's a multi-cloud world, so we are, it was a signal also to the world that we're not a VMware stack competing against other cloud stacks. Uh, we are first and best with VMware, they are still our most strategic partner, but we work with all the hyperscalers and it's a big world that is becoming multi-cloud. So, strategically speaking, as, as that becomes the reality of infrastructure and importantly as data explodes at the edge, you know, we're perfectly positioned as a company. That's the, that's the strategy. We like to say these trends are, are, are coming our way. Um, it's never been a better time, honestly, to be the leader in infrastructure from the, and the leader in client devices all the way to sort of the, the core data center in the cloud. How, how do you think about, you have a, quite an observation space as a you know, long time you know, Bain consultant. How do you think about the skill sets required to make that transition? Yeah, absolutely. Well look, we think a lot about it, right, because um, certainly, we have a lot of the native skills we need to, to uh, win in the data era as the leader in, in storage and the leader in, in, in infrastructure. You know, we secure more mission critical workloads than anybody. We know a lot about data. But what we're talking about now is not just persisting data, it's about protecting data, it's about moving data, right? And those are different skill sets that we're sort of acquiring and always looking at our teams um, to, uh, you know, to think about. And look, you know, we, are, we can do a lot of that organically. We are also always you know, contemplating the right strategic m and at the right time to sort of add to that talent and technology. And you got the balance sheet for it now, so. We do indeed, we do <laughs> indeed. We get the m and question in there, but, but uh, my question to you is, as you look at these systems, because we've always said in theCUBE many times, distributed computing's back, yep. it never went away. Cloud is just a version of that with on-premise and edge. Uh, it's an operating system, it's got all the I.O., it's got the, the control plane, it's the internet, right? And so, as you look at that, there's a system, and with the scale of cloud, ecosystems are emerging and they're super important because if you're plugging and playing solutions, you got glue layers, you got automations coming, AI, machine learning, the partners aren't just totally dependent on each other, the interdependencies go away. So as you see partners that could be Lego blocks and be composed into these large scale solutions that you guys are rolling out, what is the role of the ecosystem? What does the future ecosystem look like? How do you tell if it's healthy? And, and take us through that new formula because we see it changing. Well look, I, you know, we've been very explicit in our strategy that partnerships have to be a part of our strategy. We can't solve all of the problems of the data and multi-cloud world alone. And that, when you see announcements like Snowflake or you see us announce uh, continued collaborations with each of the hyperscalers or even how we continue to invest in and double down on our VMware relationship, it's an acknowledgement that, look, to solve the problems that our customers are telling us, this, uh, this super cloud you're describing, this integrated multi-cloud journey, you know, we're going to solve a lot of it ourselves, but a lot of it we're going to have to partner with. It's just got to be part and parcel of any good strategy. Luckily, we're a natural ecosystem partner. As I said, we are not a, another cloud stack looking to build a walled garden, right? Our, we know our, our, our spot in this, in this game, and it is to make multi-cloud simpler across the, the infrastructure so, layer. Somebody asked me, is Snowflake uh, part of Dell's ecosystem, or is Dell part of Snowflake? ecosystem, I said yes. Yes, right? Because that's, yes. A, that's a perfect example. <laughs> I think that's exactly right. These only work, and we've learned this with VMware, when it's mutually beneficial to both sides. So you look at the use cases we're talking about with Snowflake, right? 
bio-directionally copy data from our storage to their data cloud. That's beneficial yeah. to Snowflake and our customers. And of course, bringing data cloud on, on premise beneficial to us. So look, there's more win-wins when you stare at these partnerships yeah, and than I, there are zero and that's the, the And I think that's a key point from even a decade ago, the platform wars were well identified. If you were a platform, they competed against each other. You got now platforms with platforms because of the synergies of the integration. This is new, this is a new, a new dynamic. It's the great, it's the great world of, of tech. It's cooperation and it's, you know, there's certainly places where we compete sometimes, but other places that we, you know, we cooperate. And so, yeah, we're excited about our position in this multi-cloud ecosystem. We think we've positioned the company perfectly. How do you spend your time? As a COO? <laughs> just at Dell, I mean, yeah. what, you know, give us yeah. the sort of breakdown. Yeah, well look, I mean, I think that what makes it fun is no, no two days are alike, but right? But together, Jeff, Jeff Clark and I share responsibility for setting strategy with Michael and then aligning the leadership team on our strategic priorities. And you know, in the world we live in, there's days you wake up and today is supply chain day because <laughs> something has happened in the world, but you know, often it's with customers or investors, so it's a, you know, it's a true uh, COO, general manager job, and uh, I, would, I would tell you no two days are, are the same. <laughs> the strategy, solving problems, keeping things Leading moving, the team, talking to customers. Setting a vision and, uh, and listening, you know, listening to customers, right? I mean, I, at the end of the day, uh, we talk a lot about our durable competitive advantages as a company. I think our single greatest competitive advantage is our go-to-market reach and the fact that we touch more customers and partners than anyone in technology. And that gives us a inside track on yeah. what they're worried about, what they're thinking about, and how we can help. It's interesting, you mentioned how earlier how things come back around on cycles, and we're seeing hardware matter more than everything. In fact, we're doing an editorial thing on why hardware matters. Look at the advances in silicon, yeah. and, and a smaller footprint of powerful devices, compute, I talk about towers and edges, and, and so the role of hardware, and then you got the software defined software, and the role of open source in all this. It's almost a perfect storm to kind of reset this another the trajectory of growth where hardware innovations working with the the new for software sure, for can you, sure can you react to that I just I no I think it's spot on I think the um, the future of architectural innovation is really exciting when you look at what CPUs and GPUs and DPUs and and all that's able to do in the future of infrastructure and, and eventually the ability to compose your infrastructure to the workload versus you know uh, have it be rigid and silent I mean there's as much innovation inside the infrastructure as there is in the ecosystem, and um, you know, that's exciting for our customers, right? It's going to make them more efficient, it's going to make them able to make decisions with data better than they are today. It's, uh, it's great to be in our space, for sure. It's great to have you on, now you're a CUBE alumni. All right, well, uh, I watched from afar and admired, and it, uh, it was really painless, so <laughs> thank you. And thanks so much for coming yeah, no, on theCUBE. Thanks the for having me. Awesome. Keep it right there, everybody. Dave Vellante and John Furrier will be back right after this short break. You're watching theCUBE at Dell Tech World 2022.